I'm saying that so many Greens politicians particularly, and, and some people in the Labour left, seem to have little idea what we're actually dealing with, with Islamist groups like Hamas, which ordered that slaughter in Israel. It's like, well, of course Israel can make peace with these people. Of course it should just, you know, let open the gates of Gaza, let Hamas followers stroll right into Israel. And so a staffer of federal Labour frontbencher Tanya Plibersek just went along to this anti-Israel demonstration in Sydney on Monday, right after that mass murder, like, yeah, of course. He certainly didn't go with my approval. He's a uni student who works two days a week in my office. Uh, he went to the rally. As soon as I found out, I rang him and told him he shouldn't have gone. He knows he shouldn't have gone. He's very sorry that he went. Clean up in aisle seven. Uh, not many people have talked to Hamas, but one of our regular commentators, Ami Horowitz, has. A couple of years ago, he was driven to a secret location in the, the West Bank, I believe it was, to talk to Hamas organiser, to made it, made it very clear that all Israel is Palestine and only violence would give it to Muslims. Palestine is Haifa. Palestine is Jerusalem. Palestine is Tel Aviv, is, is Beersheba. That's Palestine. We call all, the, all of this Palestine as the Bible says. It's Palestine. This land is called Palestine. Is it the duty of, of every Muslim Palestinian to redeem the land through jihad? It is the duty of every, every Muslim, not only Palestinian, to redeem this land. Is there any way for you to redeem Palestine other than jihad? Is there another way? The, well, give me a suggestion. I don't know. That, that, thank, I think no, I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not in your position. Okay, there are no alternatives in the world. Joining me is Ami Horowitz. Ami Horowitz, thank you so much for joining me. Who is this Hamas guy and why did he agree to talk to you? Yeah, so um, a lot of what I do is often undercover. This guy was a mastermind of a number of major terrorist attacks uh, across Israel, including the infamous Passover bombing, which killed eerily similar in some ways to what we saw in this attack here, uh, killing a num number of people, including Holocaust survivors. The same thing was repeated over and over and over again. Uh, first of all, uh, they're not looking to make peace. They're looking to wipe out uh, all of Israel. Uh, all of Palestine is part of their purview of what their land is. They are not going to rest until they get... They're not talking about the West Bank and Gaza. They're talking about Tel Aviv and Beersheba and Haifa. And also, what they never refer to Israelis. They always refer to the Jews, right? Their plan is to kill all the Jews. All the Jews are the ones they want to wipe out. It's not about the Israelis, the Israeli oppressors. Uh, and that was a theme that kept going over and over. So it was uh, fascinating, frightening, all, all at one time. Just exactly how I like it. Well, uh, the agenda, I thought, was made explicit. Uh, the grab I've just shown uh, makes that clear. Uh, they don't want peace. They just want <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing. Israelis, uh, Jews gone or dead. Now, I watched your... Uh, whole video. I noticed there a couple of times you try to appeal to him, you know, to the human in him, as it were, you know, jokes and this sort of stuff. You got nothing. You got nothing. He seemed like a total ideologue. Yeah, uh, I always try to humanize my subject, even if they are evil, even if they are despicable. Uh, my, you know, my greatest skill set, I think, is not my interviewing prowess or the comedy. I think my greatest skill set is when I'm sitting in front of somebody and not smashing them in the face uh, with the lighting equipment. Uh, that's the toughest job that I have when I'm doing this kind of thing. And certainly that was the, the case with him. Um, yeah, it was very difficult to keep my cool. I always try to, to um, again, humanize them so I could have the conversation. And, man, there, was, there were no jokes that I could make. Uh, that we're going to crack a smile at this guy. This guy was all business, and his business is the business of death. But what do you feel about the chances of the hostages in the hands of Hamas, knowing what you know about them, knowing what they've uh, been capable of doing so far, and also knowing the support that you're seeing in the streets? Yeah, um, we're being real, and it breaks my heart to say this. I I'm not sure a single, uh, a single one of these... Of these um, Hostages are going to survive. 
I don't know how they can. Look, Israel has spent much time and resources trying to find these tunnels and destroy them, and they've had very little success. Um, this is why we would all assume that the hostages are in these tunnels. Um, I, I, don't, I don't hold out any hope that any, any of these hostages will come out of this thing alive, unfortunately. And by the way, I say that knowing that one of my cousins has uh, two of her friends were kidnapped at that rave in Southern Israel. So it, um, I say that with a very heavy heart. I wish I had something to say to counter that, but I don't. Um, Ami, you also had a pro-Palestinian protest in New York after this massacre. Uh, they were chanting slogans, you know, from, the, from Jordan to the sea that's essentially calling for the destruction of Israel. But they were doing this after seeing the sort of videos we've been seeing about what Hamas has just done. Your thoughts? <laughs> the glee, the glee that they were chanting after seeing the images that they saw, the, the gleefulness in their eyes that they were able to they see this attack of Israel. Look, if you ask any one of these people, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, man to man, and say, are you happy this happened? I'm telling you, every single one of those protesters will say, I was happy, I was celebrating, right? And, and if you look across, look, this is a typical of the Arab world, the Islamic world, the Palestinian world in particular, when an attack like this, when Jews are murdered or Americans are murdered, 9-11, what do they do? They pass out candy and sweets. This is their MO. Look, even when, when Israel or the United States has to take lives, um, and sometimes civilian lives are, are, are taken by accident, right, because that's the nature of war, you don't see a single American celebrating. You don't see a, a, a president gleefully going on TV recounting the amount of deaths, the butcher's bill, with, with happiness. Uh, we do all of that work with a heavy heart because we know it's necessary. And that's the difference between us and them. They take pride in killing civilians and it, and it, and it makes us, it saddens us to take lives. It's so true, I'm afraid. Uh, there really is a different moral calculus uh, operating here. Ami Horowitz, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure, Andrew.